What's going on guys? It's your boy Ty and today in this video I'm going to be ranking all 32 MCU movies from worst to best starting all the way back in 2008 with Iron Man right up to 2023 with Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. With that being said, you might be thinking, why are you dressed up for this video? See, ever since I started my channel, about three months ago or so, there's been one video I've been really excited to make, that being this video, an MCU ranking. Now that I put out about 30 videos or so, I feel comfortable enough to where I think I could finally tackle this beast. It's definitely going to be my most ambitious video, definitely my longest video, so I figured I might as well dress up and look professional for this one. One thing that I really want to put emphasis on, even though I'm excited to share my opinions about the MCU, I really want to hear your guys' thoughts about my rankings in this video, your own rankings, anything in the MCU, movies, characters, storylines, whatever. Drop it in the comments. I'm going to reply to everybody, so let's start a discussion. I want to hear your thoughts on everything, especially maybe some of my hot takes. Just so that we're kind of on the same page here the way that i ranked these movies was basically based off of two things on one side i based it off of just simply how much i enjoyed the movies how much i like them can i rewatch them are they enjoyable simple as that the other half is basically just how well made do i think the film is does it have good writing is there a good direction things like that i mean i think it's pretty simple to understand basically though at the end of the day it's just a matter of did i like the movie or did i not like it better than the one that it's next to all right guys i'm done ranting i'm done rambling let's just get right into the worst movie in the mcu just want to sneak this in here hopefully i keep each review as short as possible because i know that we're going through 32 movies which is pretty crazy for me and yeah if you guys appreciate this effort i'd love if you could like or subscribe that would mean the world to me thank you let's get into it the movie that i deem as the worst in the mcu coming in at number 32 is gonna be ant-man and the wasp quantumania when i went to the theater to go see this movie i thought that at the bare minimum this was going to be a top 14 maybe top 12 mcu movie Wow, I was so wrong. There was so much potential with this movie, and I don't know what happened. I don't know what Kevin Feige was doing, Peyton Reed, who I really do not like. I feel like he's so flavorless and bland. No idea what he was doing, but Loki set up Kang so nicely, and yeah, he's great in this, and that's the only good thing in this movie because everything else is so garbage. Cassie Lang is a bottom three MCU character. I hate her. She is insufferable. All she's doing is telling Scott that he should try to help people in all this. He just saved the universe. He saved half of the people on Earth. And you're telling him, oh, he has to keep helping people and stuff. Are you kidding me? For some reason, Janet thinks it's a good idea not to tell anybody that there's a insane dictator in the quantum realm that can kill everybody, every universe, and that he's destroyed universes. But no, I want to keep my lips sealed because, oh, I had a bad memory when I was there. Don't even get me started on MODOK. Don't get me started. As an idea, yeah, having Darren come back as MODOK, cool, whatever. Why does he look like that? Why does he look like that? Did, was this movie screen tested by anybody? Did anybody even go and see this movie before it was officially released? Did they get any opinions? Did anybody watch it? It's like they locked the editor for MODOK in a closet and just said, hey, make MODOK and we're just going to put it in the movie and then once we release it, we'll just see what you did. Because this is literally ridiculous. The whole thing with him, oh, you're not a dick, don't be a dick, whatever. Oh my god, it's so bad it's atrocious and don't even get me started on that ending that made kang look like such a joke because he was nerfed for no reason on top of that speaking of the ending there is zero stakes in this movie you know why because nobody dies kang didn't even kill anybody him and ant-man are punching each other back and forth and you're telling me that kang couldn't kill ant-man ant-man dying in this movie yes i love scott lang i love paul rudd i love ant-man it would have made this movie way better because at least it would have felt like kang was powerful and that he's coming in you know the kang dynasty avengers kang dynasty nope i feel absolutely nothing this movie literally was such a waste of time and a waste of potential and this was pretty much the downfall of the mcu as we know it coming in at number 31 the second worst mcu movie I have The Incredible Hulk. See, unlike Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania, I don't hate this movie. I don't really have any harsh feelings towards it, but it just feels so distant from the MCU that we know and love. 
I mean, but whether you're talking about Edward Norton obviously getting recast, Mark Ruffalo's now our Hulk, the fact that I personally do not like Hulk, Hulk's probably my least favorite hero, just because I think it's boring having your powers as, oh, you just kind of punch people and that's it. Everything else in this movie just feels very dragged down and dull. I don't really like the final battle. Tim Roth is pretty good as Abomination. I really like him in Reservoir Dogs, but I've got to say in this movie, he's kind of just there. He's okay. It just feels like the distant cousin of the MCU, and it doesn't feel like it fits in anymore. I think it aged really poorly. Just as a whole, I feel like it gets really boring in the second act and just dragged down. I don't even really want to talk about this one for too long because I don't have much to say. It's kind of just, I don't know. It's barely a part of the MCU. It's like a little stepson or something like that. But yeah, let's just move on to the next movie. I'm kind of just bored already of just talking about this movie. Coming in at number 30 is a movie that I definitely have a little bit more passion towards. That being The Eternals. I don't know why so many people try to say that The Eternals is underrated, it's underappreciated, and that when it came out it got too much hate. No, this movie still sucks in 2023. Listen, I understand they were trying to take a risk. They got Chloe Zhao in here, a more indie director, to make a more indie MCU movie. And it just didn't work out. And that's fine. But I'm sick of people defending this movie because I think it's really bad. There are way too many characters in this movie. This definitely should have been an MCU show. And trust me, I'm not the biggest fan of the shows. But at the same time, there's just too much going on here to make it a movie. Speaking of too much... This movie is like almost three hours, and I feel like the story is so boring. There's such a little action, which, yeah, I'm okay with no action, but we're watching an MCU movie. I want to see some things happening every once in a while. The timeline being out of order is just weird in this movie. I don't mind it at times, depending on the film, but this one, it just did not work in for me. Guys, this movie contains my least favorite MCU character, that being Sprite. Sprite does nothing but be annoying in this movie, make terrible decisions, betray her friends, and in the end, she gets what she wants. And that bothers me so badly. I don't know what they were thinking when it came to that. Like I said, yeah, the cinematography is great. Yeah, they got some cool actors in here. Gemma Chan's character feels so lifeless. It's like she's not even acting. It's just not good. I don't like the villain. And on top of that, I feel like it's not even like it had a satisfying ending to where I was excited for their future. No. Now we have this big celestial sticking out of the ocean, which nobody's talked about yet. And also we have a Harry Styles post credit scene. Yay. Can't wait to see him. Coming in at number 29, I have a movie that you actually might not really expect to be here, but that's actually going to be the first Thor movie. It does hurt me to put a phase one movie on here because I know the MC was just trying to get its footing. They're just trying to set up for the Avengers. It's not like these are too, you know, consequential or anything like that. But at the same time, I just don't really like this movie that much. And I just think it's not that rewatchable. It's kind of boring. Don't get me wrong. The casting in this film is obviously amazing because it set up our characters like Loki, Odin, Thor, Jane, who I thought was cast great with Natalie Portman. Even though at the same time here, this is where I get into like my cons, I don't think that Thor and Jane's relationship is that intriguing. I think that by Thor being a fish out of water in his first movie, it kind of takes away from him actually being able to like show off his Thor powers and really just be Thor. It is exciting to see. I like Selvig. He's cool. Some of the side characters are interesting. I like the guy that shoots like the laser beam out of his face. Cool. But I don't know. This is where we start with like our first Loki death. I really like the way that uh, Asgard looks as a whole because, you know, like I said, it's the first for everything. Asgard wasn't made before this. This movie created Asgard. So, yeah, overall, it's not terrible, but I don't think it's like anything too crazy. Also, I love Thor's dyed eyebrows and all 85 Dutch angles that are in this movie. Coming in at number 28, I'm just going to be honest with you. We're not really off to a hot start here with the Thor franchise. I'm placing Thor The Dark World. The second Thor movie is known for one thing. That being, it has the most forgettable villain in the MCU. It's kind of funny because the villain's so forgettable that I would almost argue he's the most memorable. That being Malekith. All everyone ever talks about him for is because he's forgettable. But how could he be forgettable if everyone always remembers his name for being forgettable? It's like this weird paradox. I don't know. Just kind of funny to me. But yeah, this is another bland MCU movie. I get it's early on in the MCU. Like I said, still trying to find their footing. But this is your second time around with Thor and you're still not really doing anything with him. We have another Loki fakeout death. And I know that's like his thing and it's funny, but 
you know, it's just not that great. I feel like the only important things in here, if you were really watching the MCU in chronological order, and I am not suggesting to skip a movie, I think that's a sin to skip a movie if you're, if you're watching the MCU for the first time, but the only thing that really matters is here is Frigga's death, like Thor's mother, and the fact that you get introduced to one of the Infinity Stones. Besides that, I think all the stuff on Earth isn't really that important, and... I mean, we kind of just have our typical, normal CGI final battle with the villain, and Thor beats him. Great. Nothing else to really say about this one. It's like, whatever. Guys, the next selection on this list is going to bother a lot of you, and I don't care. I'm sorry. I'd love to talk with you about it in the comments down below, but coming in at number 27, I have Spider-Man Far From Home. Now, before you come at me, I just want to say one thing. Spider-Man is my favorite superhero. I love Spider-Man, but there's only one problem. This movie's so rotted all the way down to its core that its basic premise literally had like no thought put into it. Why would Peter Parker get glasses from Tony Stark that basically have access to like nukes? I know that might be like exaggerating, but like killer, you know, drones and all this technology. It's like the most powerful pair of glasses or powerful technology in the world with no instructions. Nobody's telling them what to do. I don't even know if anybody knows about them really. And on top of that, Jake Gyllenhaal's Mysterio just kind of comes along and is like, hey, you're kind of young. You should give those glasses to me because I'm an adult and you're not. And it's like, okay. Then he starts basically unleashing hell with drones, but you think they're monsters and I don't know, guys. I don't know if I could buy into this. There's just no Spider-Man charm with this movie. I don't really know if I really love the side characters in this compared to, like, Homecoming and No Way Home. Like, you know, whether that's Ned or MJ. This movie's just very disappointing to me. I actually don't even think it's that rewatchable. Normally, a Spider-Man movie, I could easily just throw on and kind of just chill and watch. I don't even think this movie's that entertaining. And I know that's kind of crazy to say, but... I don't know, guys. This one is just such a big miss for me. And I just want to throw this in. I feel like it was literally just set up for No Way Home with the whole revealing his identity thing. All right, so for here on out, I just want to make it clear. I don't really hate any of the movies going forward. So we've kind of branched off of those past couple movies. Now we're moving into kind of just movies that I just don't think are that good, but I don't hate them by any means. Coming in at number 26 is going to be Doctor Strange. See, at first glance, I think this is a pretty decent movie. Benedict Cumberbatch was amazing casting as Doctor Strange. I love Wong, all that. It's all really cool. All the magic stuff's great. The CGI shots are amazing. The battles are really creative. But I just feel like sometimes it just drags. I think there's some boring scenes in this movie. And on top of that, I think it has a really weak villain. Mads Mikkelsen was just wasted in this. And it's a shame because I wish Dormammu was the main, main villain. Like, I get he's in it with the whole Dormammu have come to bargain, which is a really cool scene. That kind of ties into the whole, like, creative fights and stuff. But, yeah, maybe Dormammu will come back for Doctor Strange 3. But it's just the point of, as much as I do feel like there is a lot of creativity in here, something about it just feels like it's dragging it down. And this is something that I've always said. I feel like this movie just has the worst vibe in the MCU. I know that's not like a great critique, but at the end of the day, that's just how I feel. And that's the best way I could describe it for a lack of better words. It just has the worst vibe in the MCU to me. Coming in at number 25, I have Captain Marvel. A lot of people put Captain Marvel like bottom three on their list. I don't think it's that bad. I think it has some redeemable qualities that make it like an okay movie. I like the fact that it's kind of like this buddy cop thing with Nick Fury, especially the fact that it's like a timepiece. It's set in the 90s. We haven't really seen that in the MCU. So I thought that was pretty unique. I think the villain is just terrible. I mean, it's... It's almost laughable. I'm going to be honest with you. Off the top of my head right now, I can't even think of like the villain's name because they're that forgettable. And the fact that Captain Marvel kind of suffers from the same problem that Thor does, being that her powers are basically kept away from her for most of the movie, it just makes it like we're not even really watching Captain Marvel. At the same time, I get that she's really overpowered, so it's not like, hey, we're going to have her just destroying all the villains that we can. But... I don't know. It's also, I don't think the scrolls are that interesting. That's kind of part of why, like, I hated Secret Invasion, basically. But, yeah, I don't think this movie's anything special. Yeah, it's a cool timepiece, cool buddy cop thing. We get to see Nick Fury in action. He gets some attention. But I don't think Carol Danvers is, like, the most exciting character by any means. 
And yeah, it just kind of falls short of what I'd expect out of a Captain Marvel movie. And I don't know how this made a billion dollars. I guess it's just because it was right in between Infinity War and Endgame. Coming in at number 24, I have Ant-Man and the Wasp. When it comes to Ant-Man and the Wasp, I don't think there's much to say about it. It's kind of a movie that a lot of people forget about to an extent. I mean, it's funny. We have Ant-Man and the Wasp both playing off of each other with their dialogue. They're charming. They have a lot of charisma. We have Luis, you know, cracking jokes. He's funny. He does his reenactment stuff. It's hysterical. I really like Dosh in this. I think that, you know, Hank Pym just doing his thing. Hank Pimpin. But besides that, we've got, you know, our quest to save Janet. Relatively small stakes. We've got Ghost. Relatively small stakes. Nothing crazy is really going on here until maybe Ant-Man gets really big and we have this whole building, you know, MacGuffin thing. But yeah, that's about it. I actually really like Sonny Birch. I think he's pretty funny. A lot of people give him hate, but I don't know. He's pretty charming, and I thought the actor did a pretty good job. I don't know his name. That's my fault. But yeah, it, I don't think it's anything special. I mean, I don't have much to say. I don't want to waste your time. Let's just move on to the next movie. Number 23 really hurts me to put this low. That's going to be Thor Love and Thunder. Now listen, I'm not a Thor Love and Thunder defender. I can acknowledge that it's not that good. But the reason this movie hurts me so bad is because even though I'm not the biggest Thor fan, I was so excited to see this movie. I was listening to Guns N' Roses before this with the whole sweet child of mine that was playing in the trailer. I was so hyped. It came out right around my birthday and I was utterly disappointed in mcu phase four that's a totally new concept who would be disappointed in an mcu phase four project that never has happened before so let's just get into it we have gore the god Bitch butcher who by the way in this movie butchers like one god and then apparently in the background he butchers a bunch of other gods but guess what we don't get to see that because it kind of just happens off camera we have thor making jokes left and right cutting tension with jokes my favorite thing that ant-man and the wasp quantumania also does the one thing that really bothers me is that this feels like taika was kind of being self-indulgent and almost being a little bit what you could say is douchey when it comes to his style in this he was going so over the top and he got so much freedom it felt like he was kind of being narcissistic in a way and i watched a video about this and it's kind of true like how he puts korg pretty front and center because he plays korg it's really a shame I mean, I like the stuff with Jane and how, you know, we're kind of going through this emotional journey with her and how she has cancer, and, but it just doesn't really play that well off of the fact that we have all these jokes. We have the unfunny goats. We have the guardians shoehorned in here, especially in the promotional material. I think it is kind of funny. I do like some of the things in here. I like it more than other people, like just this movie as a whole, but <clears throat> I don't know. This still just dropped the ball for me. I like that black and white fight scene, but... I think the one thing that really bothers me the most when it comes to Taika not taking this seriously is the whole Infinity Cones thing where there's an ice cream shop in New Asgard based off of the Infinity Stones, which killed half the population. Let's just put it this way. Imagine if somewhere in Poland, somewhere op someone opened an ice cream shop, we'll just say named after a German painter from 1940. I don't think that would fly over very well with anybody in Poland, okay? They would not like that because he killed a lot of their people. So it's the same thing here where why would you make an ice cream store based off of the person who killed a lot of your people? Literally does not make sense, and I do not understand it in the slightest. This was really a miss for me. I like the soundtrack, but yeah, it, this just, just killed me, I'm going to be honest. Coming in at number 22, we have Ant-Man. It's pretty unfortunate that I had to put all three Ant-Man movies in the bottom third of my list, but at the same time, that's just kind of where they fell. I think I just like the character of Ant-Man better than the actual movies that he's in, like his own films, because I just don't think the quality is all there. Don't get me wrong, I really am intrigued by the fact that they kind of went a little bit unique with this story. First of all, this is supposed to be made by Edgar Wright, which would have been amazing, but unfortunately, we got Peyton Reed, who's, again, I'll say it, very flavorless. He has no directorial flair, but we got a heist movie in the MCU. That's cool. Marvel kind of took a risk here because even though Guardians of the Galaxy came out a year prior, they were doing something with a different hero. I mean, it's not like Ant-Man was this super popular Captain America Iron Man type hero. No, they were just trying to branch out into a different market, an untapped market of a weird superhero. And it kind of worked out for them at the end of the day. Do I think this movie's fun? Yeah, it's funny. It has cool side characters. I don't think it has too much of a heart. I really like Hank Pym. I think he's a standout in this for me. And I think Darren's actually a pretty good villain. It's, it's not the best movie in the world. It's not 
peak MCU, you know? But this movie does have a bit of nostalgia for me at this point because I feel like just any movie, just phase one, two, and three is nostalgic for me at this point. It's almost sad to say. Coming in at number 21 is a movie that I know a lot of people say is underrated. And I actually thought the same thing until I rewatched it maybe a year ago. And honestly, I just didn't love it as much as I remember. That being Iron Man 3. Any MCU movie with Iron Man in it, if it's his own movies or movies that he just cameos in, is hard to dislike. This is one of them. I think this movie's good. I don't think it's bad. I don't think it's great. I think it's just good. It tries to do a lot of different things. This is very much a Tony Stark movie, not an Iron Man movie. It dives deep into what it means to be Tony Stark. It deals with his PTSD, a lot of the other problems he's going through with, his relationship with Pepper. I think that's very important. I really like the way that the villain has personal ties to him because he kind of not betrayed him, but he did him wrong. And I actually like killing him. I think he's interesting. The Mandarin twist. I know it's controversial. I really don't mind it that much. I don't love it, but I don't know why people are like, oh, it's such a, it's such a terrible twist. I think it's like, okay, it's kind of just there. And I'm like, oh, okay, nice. You know? And I think, uh, the actor, what's his name? Ben Kingsley did a pretty funny job as like, you know, the leader of the 10 rings. It was pretty funny. But when it comes to the whole ending, I think that final battle is really cool with all the suits. The only problem is that it kind of got like retconned because I'm pretty sure Robert Downey Jr.'s contract was expiring. So basically they left it so that if Robert Downey Jr. didn't come back to the MCU, they could have ended it there with, you know, him destroying all his suits. But he re-signed the contract. So then he just continued to be Iron Man, even though like at the end of Iron Man 3, he's done being Iron Man. That threw me off a little bit. But yeah, I think all the stuff with him being in Tennessee is pretty unique. And I like all the extremist stuff. I really do think it's cool. Like I said, there's a lot of really nice stuff in here. How could I forget to mention that airplane sequence where he actually saves people? Guys, we don't get superhero movies where the superheroes actually save people. It's always them just fighting villains. But it felt so refreshing to see a hero doing hero stuff that was great but yeah with that being said i don't think it just is really that cohesive all these great things like separated from each other but when they come together i think it's just a good movie but i don't think it's amazing coming in at number 20 i have captain america the first avenger so here we are tapping into another phase one movie the thing with this movie is this kind of hurts me because now we're getting into this territory where this is a movie that i really do like and i have a great time with but there's just so many MCU movies that I love more than this one. Do I think it's bad by placing it at 20? No. I just don't think it's better than the ones in front of it. Let's get into why I like this movie, though. So, I think that the whole intro, like the first act in general, is so great. You immediately fall in love with Steve. He has this passion. He wants to be a hero. But not just that. It's more like he just wants to be someone that can protect his country it's not like he's doing it for the glory he's doing what he thinks is right in a way and his sidekick bucky's there to support him through the whole way the winter soldier by the way i'll get into it in a little bit you guys will see of course is my favorite mcu hero i know that might sound weird i know that sounds weird it's just a personal preference he's my favorite mcu here i'll get into that though but bucky with cap they're a great duo I don't really like the way it montages through World War II. I know a lot of people complain about that as well. And also, I don't really love the Red Skull. I know he's a classic Captain America hero, like whether that's in the comics or anything like that. But I don't know if he was done right, even though Hugo Weaving does a great job with the performance. Overall, I think that there's a lot of good in here. We have Peggy Carter. We have, you know, the ending, the emotional ending, even though you just met all these characters in this first film. Of course, I know it kind of is cheating to say this, but the casting, because this is the first time we're seeing Captain America. Chris Evans was just Johnny Storm. Then a couple years later, he's our Cap. He was amazing as Cap, I've got to say. Even this other casting, like Peggy, like I said, great stuff. We got uh, Tommy Lee Jones in here, just a little snuck in there. We really have some cool stuff here with the introduction of Hydra. And I think, like I said, the ending caps it off very nicely and leads us really well into the Avengers, which is going to be further down onto this list. But yeah, overall, a really fun movie. I think it's very charming. It has this real hopefulness about it, and I really like that. Coming in at number 19, I have Spider-Man Homecoming. I feel like Spider-Man Homecoming is like a good enough Spider-Man movie. I really do like it, but I don't think that it's amazing or it really touches anything close to like the Raimi trilogy or anything like that. With that being said, let's just dive into it. 
So, right off the bat, we have our villain, Vulture. It was definitely a very cool choice for a villain. Very grounded. We're keeping everything relatively, you know, our friendly neighborhood Spider-Man-esque, you know, if you know what I'm saying. But I think that the side of characters like Ned and MJ are really cool. We have Liz, his love interest. I like the way that it ties to the villain. The car sequence is awesome. Michael Keaton using that threatening nature he has, his awesome acting abilities. Really great choice there i like the way that vulture again going back to him has a motivation that you almost feel bad because you're kind of rooting for him in a way but what he's doing at the end of the day is wrong and you just can't fully buy into it i didn't love the final battle i don't think it's that good i think it's actually one of the it's on the lower end of mcu final battles because i don't know something about it's just a little bit stupid to me but everything else about the movie i like that it's relatively grounded also i need to mention i don't think that Spider-Man in the MCU, like Tom Holland Spider-Man, is Iron Boy Jr. or anything like that. Because everyone always says, oh, it's stupid that he's like connected to Iron Man, that Iron Man's his mentor. We just want Spider-Man to be on his own. If Spider-Man was on his own, then why would they even put this in the MCU? If you're in the MCU, you're going to have connections to other heroes. So I think it's actually cool and unique that his mentor is Iron Man. I like that Iron Man's in this movie. I think the boat sequence is really cool because he learns from his mistakes, and that's a part of becoming Spider-Man. Overall, like I said, it's decent. I don't think it's really amazing or super funny or anything like that. Maybe it's a little bit childish at times to me with its humor, but otherwise, I think it's a decent Spider-Man movie, and I do enjoy it. I get a kick out of it. Just a quick thing for the audience. I don't know how far into the video we are right now, but I've been recording for an hour and a half up to this point, so yeah. Uh, wish me luck with the rest of this recording. If you guys like this, please consider liking the video and subscribing. That would mean so much to me. Let's just keep going with the ranking. Coming in at number 18, I believe is one of the more overhated MC movies. That being Iron Man 2. Like I was saying earlier with Iron Man 3, it's hard for me to dislike a movie with Tony Stark in it. He's our heart and soul of the MCU. He has so much charm. Definitely one of my favorite MCU characters, if not like my second or third favorite. But this is the thing. The story in here isn't that interesting. There isn't too much action. I mean, the, the villains are okay at best. I really like Justin Hammer. I think he's charming. I know that a lot of people are saying we got to get him back in the MCU, and I definitely advocate for that, but I'm biased because I like Sam Rockwell for one reason. He's in one of my favorite movies of all time, that being The Way Way Back. If you've never seen it before, go check it out. We've got Mickey Rourke playing Whiplash, who's okay. He's basically the whole time just like, you know, I want my bird or whatever but you know i know that's kind of stupid and it's not like he actually does that much but i know he has like a personal tie to howard stark with his father kind of cool but yeah there isn't much going on here besides maybe the racetrack scene which i think is really sick especially with that briefcase iron man suit where he puts it on his chest and it just expands out super sick but yeah not exactly the most you know dazzling amazing uh you know mcu movie here coming in at number 17 god this is gonna get me some hate comments is gonna be black panther black panther is a movie that i actually used to have like top 10 in my mcu rankings maybe top 12 give or take but the more that i watch this movie the further back it just keeps going and going and going there's a lot of stuff in here that i just don't find that great starting off with the good stuff though we have to get it out of the way chadwick rest in peace he's amazing as black panther no one else could have played him better we have killmonger a sympathetic villain you kind of see his side of things here and even at the end of the movie uh, our main black panther kind of realizes wait the villain was kind of right he was going about his message the wrong way but he learned from it and he actually kind of took what he was saying and did apply it to wakanda speaking of wakanda they did such a great job at expanding the mcu we get to see a really cool part of earth with Wakanda. The whole city looks really cool. You get to see the Wakandan culture portrayed really well. It looks great. And I've got to say, I think there's some really cool fight scenes in here. They're, like the whole Killmonger, you know, heist stuff was pretty cool, like the little art section. But this is where the movie starts to fall off for me. I really do not like the third act, like kind of at all. And also, I think that Claw getting killed was a terrible choice just for the mcu as a whole i think that he would have been a really cool lingering character almost like the anti wong <laughs> i know that sounds kind of stupid but where he just keeps showing up as like a bad guy just doing little things behind the scenes to kind of maybe set things off but no instead he just gets shot in an airport and like that's it kind of stupid because it was cool to see him come from age voltron oh now he's in black panther oh what's he up to nope he just gets shot and that's it kind of stupid 
But at the same time, going back to the third act, I think it just turns into the CGI fest. Then we get into like the battle in the field where there's like the rhinos like ramming into people and there's like 50 people just like on a field kind of like punching each other. Then at a certain point, they all just kind of like stop and it's like, okay, we're not fighting anymore, whatever. Daniel Kaluuya, is that how you say his name? Oh God, I forgot how to say his name and I really do like him too. But he's in this too. I really like him, but I don't really know if I love his character that much, the way that he kind of like goes against his own people. But again, I like Ross in this. He's great. I think he's charming. He brings something different because he's like an outsider. So I like the way he's brought into Wakanda and his perspective on things here. But yeah, overall, I just don't really love this movie as much as other people do. I still think it is really good, but I just don't think it's a masterpiece. I'm kind of laughing right now because I'm looking at my notes in front of me and I'm looking at what's at number 16. And if you've made it up to this point of the video, you're going to give me a really big hate comment because I put Black Panther at number 17, but at number 16. 16, believe it or not, I have Black Widow. I genuinely do think it's a better movie, okay? Just to be clear. This movie is so overhated for no reason. Right off the bat, though, I've got to say, I am so biased because this is the first MCU movie that I ever saw in theaters. I became an MCU fan, like, over the pandemic, like, late 2020, early 2021, when I watched all the movies. So this is the first one I saw in theaters, and I really liked it. But even re-watching it, I think it's a good movie, and I don't really understand the hate that much. I get there's some stuff. The Taskmaster stuff, yes, that's so dumb. The CGI at the end, yes, some of it looks bad. But otherwise, I think it's a really heartfelt family story, and I think it fills in the gap for Black Widow between Civil War and Infinity War nicely and kind of just gives her more screen time. It just You get to see her on another adventure. When it comes to the other characters in this movie, Yelena, I think, is great. David Harbour is so funny in this. You've got the mom. She's doing her thing. She's spectacular. I just don't know what the hate is with this movie. I think that it's relatively grounded. And yes, I know that at the end, we turn into this, you know, like space battle, you could say, where we're on this big airship with like the Red Room. But, but I think that the whole thing with it collapsing looks so awesome when she's sliding down with taskmaster off like those plates when everything's crashing in the sky i think it looks sick i don't know what the problem is i find the story really intriguing i think that the whole uh jailbreak scene with red guardians really cool where they're escaping man i don't know what the problem is if you ask me would i rather have this movie exist or not exist just to get another black widow movie especially after she died yeah give it to me. I get it was released at the wrong time, but now that it's been a couple years, who cares? It doesn't matter. It's just in the MCU now. And I'm telling you, I really recommend to go rewatch this movie with an open mind because it's actually pretty good. At least in my opinion, you might think I'm wrong and that's fine. Coming in at number 15, I didn't realize that I sandwiched Black Widow like this, but I have Wakanda Forever. Wakanda Forever is one of two MCU movies that's ever made me cry. That intro sequence was so heartbreaking. Oh God, man. It, oh. That got me in the theater, man. The whole theater was silent when I watched that movie for the first time. I've got to say, definitely a really good MCU movie. It's a little bit long. I don't mind it too much, though, because it just takes its time to just set up a lot of stuff that they're trying to do here. Do I think they're trying to do too much? Maybe slightly, but I know that Ryan Coogler and everyone behind this movie was dealt a really bad hand with what they were working with here, so I do think they did a good enough job. I don't really like the ending of the film that much. I don't love Ironheart. I think she's a bit annoying, and I feel like she was kind of just thrown in here just to kind of set up the show and just set up a character in the MCU. Speaking of setting up the MCU, I think all the U.S. politics stuff they do with, like, Valentina and, like, Ross. Is that her name, Valentina? The woman who's, like, trying to set up the Thunderbolts. I think that's also kind of just thrown in here and just, like, an extra thing. No more is great, though. I really like the presence he brings, the attack on Wakanda. There's some really cool scenes in here. And don't even get me started on that Killmonger sequence. That was really sick, especially with Shuri's battle of what she's going to do as Black Panther. It was great. I really liked the movie. So let's move on to the next film. I'm not really trying to set like tears or anything, but every movie from here on out, I'm honestly really passionate about. And I just want to make that clear because God, I'm so excited to talk about these movies. Thank you guys for sticking around this long. Coming in at number 14 is going to be Thor Ragnarok. Finally, I am giving the Thor franchise some justice here. Listen, I just don't really like those other three movies that much. Okay. It's not really my fault, but Thor Ragnarok is really great it puts his own touch on the mcu with that being it's literally a comedy movie taika waititi did his thing with this film obviously he had a little bit more restraint from kevin feige here because 
you know, it's not just an all-out joke fest like, you know, other movies are. I don't want to say Thor Love and Thunder. But at the same time, we introduced a lot of great side characters here with Korg. We've got Valkyrie. And they actually are kind of important to the story, which I really like. Speaking of the story, I thought it was actually a very unique adventure story. I feel like a lot of the MCU movies can be like more action oriented and stuff. This felt like an adventure. I thought Sakaar looked amazing. We've got Jeff Goldblum as the leader. That was pretty funny. And yeah, the whole Led Zeppelin ending with him fighting Hela, who's really a remarkable villain. Just awesome stuff here. There's really some great stuff in here. Some good cameos like Matt Damon in the play. It's funny. It's charming. Taika did his thing. And I've still got to give him his flowers for this movie because even if I don't like what he did with Thor 4, I really like this movie, especially the Thor versus Hulk battle. He's a friend from work. Come on, man. All these MCU quotes. Oh, God, I, I just love the MCU, man. I'm sorry. But yeah, with that being said, Thor 4, Thor Ragnarok is coming in at number 14. Guys, we are getting controversial here. Coming in at number 13 is a movie that I originally did not like, but I rewatched and I just fell in love with it. That being Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. See, I can completely understand why people would not like this movie. I get it. I don't think that it's a super well-made film overall. I think that its direction is a little bit odd and that they could have kind of steered it into another way to make this a really great movie. However, I just think that Sam Raimi did his thing with this. He is one of my favorite superhero directors ever. I mean, the Raimi trilogy, the Spider-Man trilogy is awesome. His flair, his horror elements from Evil Dead. Yeah, he's not really using his Spider-Man, like, you know, campiness, more of his Evil Dead horror elements. I thought they were incorporated so well in here with all the Wanda stuff. Speaking of Wanda, it's awesome to see a hero in the MCU turn into a villain and that be our plot line for the movie. I know that you kind of had to do some homework with like watching shows to kind of understand the movie, which I do feel is stupid, even though I know as an MCU fan, it's like you should be watching the shows, but I, I don't know. I feel like that puts pressure on casual fans. The Illuminati stuff, I think it was awesome the way that they just got decimated. That was so sick. And I get it again. I know that some of this stuff is weird with the fact that they almost barely even traveled the multiverse of madness. I feel like all the hype marketing and even just the name is just kind of like ruined the expectations of this movie because they almost barely even traveled the multiverse. I would have liked to have seen other worlds, not just a world where, you know, they eat like pizza balls or whatever it was and they cross on red and you know stop on green kind of stupid overall but yeah i think there's a lot of goofiness in here but i feel like it's goofy fun especially that final battle where you're like looking back and saying wait the dead strange and then we have this sick dead strange with all these demons sam raimi doing his thing with the horror elements like i said fighting wanda one-on-one -on -one, plus america chavez who was a really cool addition just so cool to me and i really liked it I can see its flaws, but I think this is a really flawed movie that I just have so much fun with, and I just can't look past, I, I can look past the flaws, I should say, because of just what a great time I have with this film. I just, I love it. I'm going to be honest with you. I really just love it, but I could see why you wouldn't love it. Coming in at number 12 is a movie that I do want to rate higher, but there's just some little things that are holding it back for me. That being Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. The Guardians of the Galaxy trilogy, in my opinion, is the greatest superhero trilogy of all time, at least until we get that third Spider-Verse movie, then we'll decide. But with that being said, let's just get into why I think this movie is so great. First of all, I think that it's actually justified its existence. I know sometimes we have a sequel just for the sake of being a sequel, but at the end of the first Guardians movie, they kind of tease that something's going on with Peter's father, and that's why he was able to survive holding the Infinity Stone. That nicely leads us into the second Guardians movie because it feels like we actually earned the sequel. There's a reason why we have a second movie. It's not like a villain just comes out of nowhere. With that being said, I don't necessarily love Ego, I think it's a little bit weird with the execution and how he has this secret plan. And yeah, it's cool, the secret plan. I love the scene where, you know, the whole meme where Peter's just like, what? And the whole thing about how he actually killed his mom, that was really emotional. And I, I it almost made me mad, you know what I mean? But that's what you want out of a villain. You want, you love to hate the villain. That's the thing. 
I don't like how the team's kind of split up here in a way where it feels like everyone on Ego's planet is kind of just neandering and just wandering around, kind of just doing nothing. They're talking, having conversations. Then Rocket and Yandu are just doing like the coolest stuff ever. And I just, I love them together as a pair. The realization between Yandu and Rocket that they're kind of like the same person is so cool to me. And I really liked that connection about how they're kind of like standoffish and all that. And they're like loners in a way. Man, this scene where they're on the ship together and they're like wiping everyone out is so cool. I actually think Guardians of the Galaxy 2 has the best soundtrack. Yep, maybe the first one is better, but I think that the second one, at least in my off the top of my head right now, is the best soundtrack. Mr. Blue Sky. You've got so many other great movie, uh, other great songs. Damn, getting confused here. Within this film, I just love it. I really like the ending of this film as well with Yandu's sacrifice. Absolutely beautiful. It's poetic. Yandu, we all love you. You're an amazing character. Love Yandu, man. How could you not? And oh, the Ravenger funeral at the end almost could make me cry. So close. But honestly, doesn't reach the mark for me. God, I'm rambling over here. I said I wouldn't go on tangents in this video, yet here I am. So with that being said, that's my review for Guardians of the Galaxy 2. Coming in at number, let me check my notes, 12. I have never been more excited for a movie than the one that is coming in at number 11, with that being Spider-Man No Way Home. What? A movie. Listen, I understand that not everything in this movie makes sense. I know that the whole curing the villains thing is really dumb. I know that the first half of this movie, quite honestly, is pretty uninteresting and slow and boring. I know that the setup and the premise for this movie, where Peter asks Doctor Strange if everyone can forget every like, it is really dumb. I'm gonna be honest with you, but at a certain point, I just let nostalgia put a little blindfold over me. And just let me go for a fun ride. Because I don't care. I don't care if there's stupid stuff in this movie. We got Tom Holland, Toby, and Andrew together in an epic second half of a movie. Like I said, I don't really love the first half. Also, I don't love what they're trying to do with the villains. Like I said, you should just kill them. They're villains. They're trying to kill people. But we got the ultimate fan service. There is no greater fan service. Like, can you believe that we got all three Spider-Man on screen together? Really? And we got to see them in this huge epic battle. We got to see Doctor Strange be incorporated to another MCU hero. So cool to see them banter together. I mean, I don't know if I've ever been smiling more in a theater ever. The way I was cheering, chanting. And I know, like I said, this movie has flaws. That's why it is at number 11 and it's not like top 10 for me or even just like top 5, whatever. I, I do restrain myself, but wow. What an amazing movie when it comes to just the nostalgia. This is like one of the rare times where I really just let nostalgia take control and just do its thing because I have such a great time whenever I watch this movie. Number 10 on this list might be a little bit of a surprise for you guys, but it's going to be Shang-Chi. I can easily recognize that Phase 4 has had a handful of misses, but Shang-Chi was so great and I just loved it. I really loved the way that we had this villain, Wenwu, who is Shang-Chi's father, and he was longing for his wife who passed away, and he thinks that she's telling him to, like, come get her or whatever, but really it's like a demon secretly, like, you know, whispering in his ear to tell him to do bad stuff, so it's not like he's really doing bad things, he's being influenced, and I love movies with unique villains like that, where it's just, it's like a different take on a villain. The whole hand-to-hand -hand combat thing, the influences from martial arts and just Asian culture as a whole was so awesome the fight scenes were beautiful that bus scene is amazing it's so great definitely one of my favorite scenes in the mcu i could probably say that about like a hundred scenes in the mcu but i don't care a lot of people don't like aquafina i get it i don't think she's that bad in this i actually kind of like her as katie but i think it's kind of charming it's funny i like his sister i like how we see some teases in the mcu like with the whole 10 rings thing and how um, ben Kingley's character, kind of the Mandarin thing comes back. We see Abomination. We see Wong. Just very unique. I really like this movie. I know that at the end it gets that to the whole, you know, CGI final battle thing. 
I know, I don't really love that. I think it, that is a flaw of the movie, but I don't think it went too over the top, and I think it was a really, like, epic battle, and it was really cool with the whole dragon thing, especially the way he defeats it by just, like, shooting the rings in his chest. Really sick. Guys, I have nine movies to go. I am honestly very tired right now, but let's power through them. In case you guys can't tell already from what I haven't listed up to this point, I really like the Avengers movies, clearly. Coming in at number 9 is going to be Avengers Age of Ultron. Avengers Age of Ultron is a really fun time with the Avengers that is still slightly flawed to me. I think there's a, so much to love in here. You've got Ultron being this menacing robot that has access to like the whole internet. He just knows everything and from that he decides that he just wants to like end the world. That's sick. We're setting up a lot here. We've got Vision. We've got Wanda. Quicksilver who does get killed, but I might be one of the only people that actually likes the fact that Quicksilver got killed because it is kind of a part of Wanda's character arc, and it, that's kind of like what leads to her becoming evil, you could kind of say, and just leading into her pain, so I actually kind of liked it. I think that everyone in here is really charming. You get to see that banter between all the characters. I mean, like, there isn't too much to really say here. It's just the whole thing that the Avengers are on screen doing their thing. You could say to an extent, even though this movie is important for the MCU, it's like a filler Avengers movie, but at the same time, it's so much fun. If I had to dive into my flaws here, like I said, I do think it's doing a little bit too much with the story. Things can get a little bit confusing, maybe, and also, I really don't like the whole love story between like Bruce and Natasha. I think that's a little bit weird. On top of that, the whole thing with Thor going to like take a bath I still don't really understand that. I have to rewatch this movie. I haven't seen it in a little bit, but I did write notes down. I don't really remember what that was all about, but I do remember thinking that that was really weird. He's just doing like this little side quest. Kind of odd. Coming in at number eight, I'm going to be putting the first Iron Man movie. It's so crazy to think what came of this movie that at first was risky with its casting, Robert Downey Jr. coming out of rehab. You've got all this money you're putting into it, especially that Marvel didn't really, you know, have any established super mega hits at the time. And the fact that superhero movies weren't really that popular. Think about it. The MCU has made them 10 times, 100 times as popular as they, as they were back then. The thing is, this movie didn't have the weight of the MCU on its shoulders. It was just able to tell a simple, grounded character story just diving into Tony Stark and who he is. Everything about this movie is so well crafted and it's crazy to me to think that like it still holds up so well to this day because you've got movies that came out around the same time like Fantastic Four that I don't think held up like as well but this movie is so great. Tony Stark, he's not a likable guy. He's not at all. He's mean to everybody he talks to but he's redeemable. He has some features about him, some, even though they're deep down inside, that you're still saying to yourself, that's still a good man. And you see that because once he develops the Iron Man suit, you realize he's going to be a hero. That's what he is at his heart. He is a hero, whether he thinks it or not. And that's the arc that we see over the course of this movie with him saying at the end, I am Iron Man. He's embracing the fact that he's a hero. It's beautiful. Obadiah Stane's a great hero. Let me just throw this in here really quick. I'm sorry. I mean, if you're up, if you're up to the uh to this point in the video honestly good for you but tony stark built this in a cave with a box of scraps what a classic line absolutely classic i love it there's no beating around it it's just a great villain it's a classic movie i, I don't even have much more to say back in black being thrown in here great has a great intro has some really cool sequences with all like the 10 ring stuff and how it's connected and the twist is awesome man that post credit scene nick fury we're getting the avengers together man that's it that kicked us off. Amazing, spectacular, love this movie to death. Coming in at number seven is going to be Captain America Civil War. The way that Civil War manages to stay relatively grounded throughout its runtime, while also having almost the largest stakes we've seen in an MCU movie up to that point in the MCU, is pretty crazy. I love how it plays off of Age of Ultron and shows that that movie had consequences. It wasn't like, oh, Tony created Ultron and that's it, we're dropping it. No. Some people were mad about that. Some people like Zemo, who wanted to take matters into their own hands. Zemo is one of the best MCU movies, and he doesn't even have powers. He's manipulating these heroes, and it's not even like he could really fight them back if he had to. He would get killed in an instant. I love the ending 
I love how emotional it is. The way that Tony sees Bucky killed Tony's parents, but Steve also knew Zemo perfectly pulled apart the Avengers, and that's why they lost in Infinity War. That's the reason they lost. It's crazy to think how Zemo is the reason that all this stuff happened. So cool. So amazing. The airport battle. Unbelievable. It's like a thing. It's a dream, honestly. It's a dream come true. It's like you got all your action figures and you just started throwing them at each other. And that got put into a $200 million film. Awesome. We get Black Panther introduced in this. We get Spider-Man introduced in this. I'm happy we didn't get an origin for both of them. Or at least just Spider-Man because we've seen so many Spider-Man origins. So cool i don't have much more to say about this film it speaks for itself i love zemo and i love all the characters and the fact that this movie it's its whole dispute is just over a contract the sokovia accords a piece of paper and it really it, it makes you think like what side do i even root for such a unique take on a superhero movie great movie coming in at number six is a movie that i just rewatched maybe two days ago that being Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. The thing that I love so much about Guardians of the Galaxy 3 is something that I know a lot of people have said already, but it takes a side character and puts them front and center and shows this has been their story. We're going to go into their character arc because they deserve it the most. They've been there. They have the most to explore. The High Evolutionary is such a menacing villain, and the way that he ties into Rocket makes it make sense as to why he would be our main character basically in this movie. One character that I actually don't think is talked about enough in this movie is Nebula. I think she actually has a really nice, I don't wanna say arc in this, but cause I think she already had her arc, but I think her the end of her arc is shown the most in this and she shows the most change because now she's just like this actual, well, she's, she still is cold, but she has this loving nature about her. When she finds out at the end Rocket's still alive, she almost breaks down. And that's crazy to see because she's always been so menacing and stuck up. But now, to see her at a point of weakness is crazy. I mean, oh, the way that this just goes on a crazy ride through space. We're seeing Nathan Fillion have his charm because James Gunn, of course, this godly superhero director just incorporates everything so nicely the set design is beautiful there's just so much creativity heart and just love in this movie and you could really tell the soundtrack's good i honestly think this is the weakest soundtrack if i'm gonna be honest but i don't think that's a flaw one thing that i just don't love about this movie and i am nitpicking here is that none of our main heroes died i know that might sound crazy because i know everyone's arc ended nicely but i still do wish that someone died in this. Even if it was just someone, someone small, like, I mean, I don't want to throw them under the bus, but like Kraglin or maybe just Drax, I'm sorry. I do wish someone died in this, but still, a spectacular film focusing on our hero rocket. This movie did make me cry. And also, shout out to Teefs, Floor, and Lila. Shout out to them, man. They, rest in peace, man. Rest in peace. See, the problem with the MCU having so many masterpieces is that my movie coming in at number five may actually be considered low for some people. That movie being Avengers Infinity War. Avengers Infinity War has the heroes lose. Yeah, the heroes lose in this movie. When have you ever really seen that? Yeah, I bet there's other movies with it, but just off the top of my head when it comes to superhero movies, that's crazy because your expectations are always you know, the same, you're seeing the same MCU formula. This movie turns it right on its head and leaves you speechless. Thanos is such an amazing villain. You've got so much going on in this movie, but it's cohesive and it makes sense why everything's going on. Even though you've got this group, you know, doing this thing, this group doing this thing, this group doing this thing, I'd argue that it just makes things more interesting. Instead of everyone being together and they're kind of just following like a leader, going here, 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 no. There's a lot of complicated stuff going on and that's the thing. Since everything's so complicated, and again, we're suffering from the ramifications of Civil War, it's not like all these Avengers are on good terms, so we've got separate things going on here. So awesome. Thor entering Wakanda, awesome. The ending, that those last few minutes, absolutely soul-crushing, just so quiet. The score, splendid. Just, well, I mean, at the time... I just can't imagine what this was like to watch in the theaters because unfortunately, I wasn't really an MCU fan like that. So I never got to experience this movie in the theaters or Endgame, but that's just how it is. I still love this movie though. I think it's great. The only reason I don't have it higher is just because of the fact that it just doesn't necessarily click with me 
as much as the four movies above this, but obviously it's the fifth rated highest movie in my favorite franchise. I still love it. Also, one thing I gotta throw in here just because it just makes sense. How could you just not love to see all these characters just together? When would you have thought you'd see, you know, Iron Man with Doctor Strange, with Star-Lord, with Mantis, with, you know, all these characters just together with Spider-Man? Such an amazing collaboration between all these characters. God, I love how threatening the villains are. I could talk about these movies all day. So, yeah, that's going to be my number five spot. Coming in at number four is an absolutely historic movie for the superhero genre as a whole. That being The Avengers. Even if I don't necessarily love the movies from phase one of the MCU, I really do have a lot of nostalgia for them and I like them. But the one thing I can really give them credit for is how well they set up the Avengers. They established our characters, they made them likable, and then when they all teamed up, you watch their chemistry start to kind of work together and you get this amazing story and the Avengers is just born. It's like this first superhero ensemble ever. Unbelievably beautiful. If I just want to point out one flaw before I really get into the good stuff here, I think that it's shot a little bit like a TV movie, if that makes sense, where like a lot of the color grading is kind of corny to me. It's like this light blue tone. Like, I don't really know how to describe it. Hopefully you'll understand what I mean. But moving past that, because who cares? The way that Loki returns, a villain we're already familiar with. So we have history here. So great. We have a personal tie. I like how we have other characters coming in here, like Selvig. We have Phil Coulson's death being the thing that pushes the Avengers to kind of work together because they're having all these struggles. Also, I mean, like I said, their banter, just so good. It's funny. Everyone gets their moment. And oh God, man, I, it just makes me so happy to finally be able to talk about the MCU on this channel, if I'm going to be honest with you. But the one shot where they're all standing right in front of Grand Central Station and the, the camera is just panning around them with that swelling score. Man, man, it's beautiful. I love this movie. It's spectacular. It's, it's timeless. It really is a classic and I love it. I don't know how many times I could say that. I just love it. And just like that, we are entering our top Three. Coming in at number three, I have Avengers Endgame. Of course, this movie has the greatest, most epic final battle of all time on display here. We've had years of buildup leading up to this awesome moment where even though our heroes lost in the previous movie, they redeem themselves and they're able to actually give themselves a fighting chance at the bare minimum to defeat Thanos. Amazing. Thanos is so great the whole time travel thing i think it's such a unique thing in the mcu i think it's a great take and i really like that they kind of risked it here like that especially you know the way that it kind of gave us loki because you know things got messed up not everything was perfect with it just unbelievable the score like i mentioned in the first avengers movie the score in avengers endgame is so great the, the almost sad tone this movie has, the way it deals with the trauma, especially in the first act of everyone just trying to recover from what happened. I mean, everyone died. It's been five years, and a lot of people that you know, like I said, just died, and people are trying to move on from that, from the blip. But when Scott Lang gives them a dying chance, they go after it, and it's just crazy to see the direction this movie took, and the Russo brothers are truly geniuses. Like, so many unbelievable, historical, I'd almost argue, to film as a whole moments in this film. Cap picking up the hammer, and of course, finishing us off with, I am Iron Man, snap. Beautiful, some unexpected deaths in here. Really great set pieces, great scenes. Love it, love his death. Coming in at number two is going to be Captain America and the Winter Soldier. The way that this movie instills paranoia in you and makes it so that you cannot trust anyone around you is amazing. It isolates our main hero, Captain America, and turns his own morals on its head. You can't trust anybody. Everyone you've been working with this whole time, that's it, it's over. S.H.I.E.L.D. has been infiltrated by Hydra. What a unique concept. And we get a menacing, unbelievably cool looking villain in the Winter Soldier that Captain America has the most personal of ties to. That being, it's his best friend that he thought died like 70 years ago. And then he realizes that. And it's so awesome. And the Winter Soldier's look, the way he looks with his little mask, and then it falls off, and he has that eye shadow and the eye black. Sick. 
Nick Fury, the scene where he's in the car and everyone's shooting at him. So awesome. Like at a certain point, I like especially that I've been recording for two hours, so I'm sorry if my vocabulary isn't up to par. I just, I can't even comprehend like how creative you have to be to make a film like this. The way it takes a spy thriller, then you're incorporating things like Alex Pierce, like our main villain here, where he's kind of always kind of been like, you know, sneaking his thoughts and own personal feelings into S.H.I.E.L.D. And that's why uh, Hydra's been able to survive so long. Just amazing. I love Black Widow's incorporation in this. I love all the individual scenes, the ending, the emotional ending with that. I mean, I'm with you to the end of the line with Cap. He doesn't want to hurt Bucky, but he knows that they have to fight because, you know, a lot of people are going to die with these big warships that are going up. Also, I think at the end, even though we have kind of like a CGI battle, it's still relatively grounded. I mean, it's just like ships going up in the air, nothing too crazy. God, I just, I really love this. This is one of the movies that when I watched it for the first time, only a couple years ago when I was watching it, uh, the MCU movies in order for the first time, I didn't, didn't know everyone loved this movie and I didn't have any expectations for it, but I watched it and just genuinely fell in love with it. And especially the fact that I didn't know people already thought this was a great movie made me like know that this is my actual own opinion and that I really did have a strong love for this movie. The Winter Soldier is still, in my opinion, the coolest like hero in the MCU, at least just look-wise, and he's definitely my favorite just character in the MCU. I think he's so sick. Guys, we've made it to the end. Coming in at number one, the best movie in the MCU, in my opinion, is Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 1. Ten years ago, Kevin Feige gave James Gunn a chance, an opportunity, to get this ragtag team of random characters that people that were even fans of the comics didn't even think would like really turn into anything great or would be able to have some type of emotional resemblance on screen or screen presence as a whole. James Gunn turned these characters into one of the greatest, if not the greatest, I'll give the Avengers their credit, superhero team of all time. The way that they're a family, the way that they turned into a family in this movie, when they didn't even have any connections beforehand besides Rocket and Groot, is amazing. The dialogue is so tight and it's crafted spectacularly. James Gunn clearly put every ounce of energy he had d about a decade ago into this film. The soundtrack is what makes it stand out. That iconic intro with Come and Get Your Love, where you think it's all serious. We've got Starler landing on that planet. Then he turns on his Walkman. And now he's singing with a little rat creature in his hand. You start to say, oh, that's what we're going for with this movie. And you fall in love with these characters so quickly because they're so likable, even though they have flaws of their own. The love between Nebula and Star-Lord, so easy to believe and root for. I actually think Ronin's a good villain. I know that a lot of people didn't like Ronin. I actually really did enjoy him, especially him going against Thanos. Plus, this movie introduces the Infinity Stones, so it's its own self-contained story, but also it has a lot of ramifications for the future of the MCU, the next five years of it. Just wow. A masterclass of the superhero genre. Truly an unbelievable, remarkable film of its time, and I've got to say, I just love the MCU. That's the final message I want to leave on this video. I'm so excited for James Gunn to be leading the DCEU, but yeah, guys. I mean, that's the final review for this video. Wow, I am exhausted right now. I just recorded for two and a half hours straight. I don't even know how long this video actually is because I haven't edited it yet. Guys, if you appreciate the effort that I put into this, I would really love if you could drop a like. Maybe subscribe if you want to stick around. I'm going to probably be doing more rankings if this video does well. But either way, I'll probably just make whatever I want because, you know, I just have a passion. I don't really care about how well these videos do. But if you're, if you're even watching right now, thank you so much. I'd love to hear your thoughts down below. I love you guys, and I will see you in the next video.